There are five terrible ingredients that you're probably consuming every week, if not every single day. These ingredients offer no benefit to your health and are quite harmful over time. Hi, Wellness Warriors. I'm Dr. Nick Zarowski, and I started my holistic health practice in order to help you take control of your health naturally because true health only comes naturally. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Give this video a thumbs up and share with me your thoughts in the comments below. I also wanna give you a quick reminder that it is the last week of open enrollment for my one-on-one -on -one health consulting program. This is where you can get a health screening by a natural doctor and work to get to the root cause and reverse the health problems that you face today. To learn more, click on the link in the description below. In general, the reason that we see bad ingredients in food is because the manufacturers are trying to come up with a look, a feel, a taste, a consistency that makes the food appealing, but yet keeps it really cheap and also keeps profits high. So they make concoctions in the labs that are designed to make these foods taste real, even though they're not. Because the natural ingredients found in nature, well, those are just too expensive. The first toxic ingredient that I wanna talk about is going to be artificial flavorings. This is a synthetic ingredient made in a lab designed to mimic the flavor of something that you would normally find in nature. Now, when we look at the research, it's actually quite alarming because what they found is that when they use these artificial flavorings in concentrated doses, they did some pretty nasty stuff to people. Now you might think to yourself, well, you know, these are concentrated doses, but of course it begs the question when you're eating low doses of it over a lifetime, what's gonna happen to you? Because in the research, what they found is that it actually inhibited the production of red blood cells. It had a toxic effect on your bone marrow, and it also inhibited cell division. Now, these are all reasons enough for me to want to stay away from anything that has artificial ingredients in it. As we talk about this topic, a story comes to mind. Now, growing up, my dad was in the grocery industry, and he'd go to these big industry meetings, and they would talk about their major competitors. Now, there's this big grocery chain, of these huge stores that are in the United States, and one of the things that they were doing with their food was pretty incredible. I was blown away when I found out about this. They would take products and they would cheapen the ingredients in order to increase profits and also drive down the cost of the actual product. So let me give you an example. They would take something like a pizza. They'd go to the pizza manufacturer of the frozen pizza that was being sold in their store and they'd say, hey, look, we have to increase the profit, drive down the cost of this pizza so we can compete at a higher level. And then the pizza companies say, hey, look, we gotta make a buck and there's nothing we can do to make this any cheaper. And they'd say, no, 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 we, we got you, we got you. Here's what you can do. Send your pizza off to our facility and we'll analyze it. We'll tell you exactly how you can make your pizza cheaper. And they'd look at it and they'd say, well, instead of using this like real tomato sauce, we can use like a tapioca sauce and we can flavor it and change the color of it. And we can take these ingredients out of the crust and we can and, you know, uh, subtract this and add this, all of a sudden you had a pizza that was far less money that tasted the same or potentially even better with all these synthetic ingredients in it. And then they had a product. And the craziest thing about it is that you could go and you could take that same pizza company. They could be sold in a store with all the real ingredients that look exactly the same. And then you could go to this other store and they would have cheapened ingredients and it would be a cheaper price. And most people would pick this side over here because it looks the same, it tastes the same, and it's far cheaper. So you have to be really careful and always look at your labels when buying your food. This next food additive is a very common ingredient that seems like it's in everything anymore. And you must avoid it because it's associated with some of the most common health challenges that people face today. This food additive is gonna be your trans fats, your hydrogenated oils, and we could probably just sum them up all into bad fats. Now these bad fats are gonna be found in pretty much every prepackaged junk food that's on the planet. And you're also gonna find these in pretty much any restaurants that are frying all their food. Now these bad fats are associated with insulin resistance. And for many people, this is kind of a funny concept because they think, well, I thought the only way you could get insulin resistance was by eating too much sugar. But the fact is, is health is a little bit complicated. Now there was this one study and they looked at 80,000 women. And what they found is that those women who ate a lot of trans 
trans fats had a 40% higher risk of getting diabetes. These bad fats go on further to be associated and linked to chronic inflammation, cardiovascular disease, and even cancer. Now you can see the real danger associated with these. And over the past couple years, a lot of online gurus have really jumped on the keto bandwagon, looking at dirty keto as a viable option to losing weight. Yes, you may lose weight, but eating all those bad fats is terrible for you. So I've been incredibly critical of this because skinny people still have chronic inflammation and skinny people still get cancer. So we can't look at weight loss as the only factor in being healthy. Now these bad fats, you gotta be careful with them too because they come in all shapes and forms. Recently, I had a dietitian just explaining to me how delicious the coffee creamer that they use is. And I thought to myself, well, which one is it? I'd like to try that. And they're like, well, you know, it comes in this blue bottle and I'm thinking to myself, okay, okay. And they say, yeah, it's French vanilla. And I go, okay. I said, does it have a red cap by any chance? And they're like, yeah, it's got a red cap. I said, um, I want you to look at that, but I'm pretty sure that creamer that you use is literally a non-dairy creamer which is a 100% hydrogenated oil that is flavored with sugar in it. How terrible is that? A dietitian of all people. Okay, now let's talk about sweeteners. And I'm gonna keep this short and sweet because this is a huge topic to unpack and we could talk about it for days. Now, here's the short version, it goes like this. When we look at the marketplace and we look at all the different ingredients and all the different names in which sugar goes under, there's gonna be over 150 different names. Now, most of them are going to end in os and if it doesn't end in os it'll be a name with some type of syrup after it so we have to watch out for all of those and the reason that it's so important to avoid all these different sugars is because when we look at all the chronic disease and ailments that you're going to find in the modern industrial society they're linked to sugar. And because we now know how bad sugar is for us, a lot of these manufacturers tried to use other ingredients like artificial sweeteners, things like aspartame, things like Splenda. But we know that these also aren't good for us either and we need to avoid them because they can have a negative neurological impact on our body. Of course, some argue that. And here's the thing that's very interesting about this is I have this patient and he is a executive pilot and he actually manages a whole fleet of jets for a very large company. And one of the things uh, I had asked him one day is, hey, you know, I've been told that uh, pilots aren't allowed to drink diet sodas with artificial sweeteners in it. Is that true? And he goes, oh, absolutely. You're not allowed to drink it while you're flying. You're not allowed to drink it within a certain period of flying an airplane. I said, okay, well, why is that? He said, because because it alters your response time. It has neurological impact on the body and alters your response time if you had to make a quick decision while flying or piloting an aircraft. And I thought, oh, pretty interesting. So if you are looking for a sweet treat and you want something that's not going to raise your blood sugar, you can look for natural sweeteners. Think monk fruit. You can use things like stevia, which comes from nature, the stevia leaf. You can even use erythritol or even xylitol. And these are all going to be viable options. This next toxic ingredient is stuck into many foods. And I can't tell you how often somebody goes and gets my kids a healthy snack and then this is in it. And then you look at the label of that healthy snack and it's like all natural, uh, non-GMO, certified by this fair trade organization. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is a really good food. And at the end of the ingredient list, you see artificial colorings. You see food colorings in it. And you know, this is very common to be put in foods because what they're doing is trying to trick your brain to think it's something you want to eat. Now, if you didn't know this, naturally, we're very attracted to bright colored foods because bright colored foods in nature are healthy. We're thinking berries, we're thinking fruit, we're thinking veggies, right? But we're not, <laughs> we're not supposed to think that some sort of, you know, uh, chemically made ingredient is supposed to be healthy for us, but we do. So when you go to an ingredient list and at the very bottom of it you see things like red 40, yellow 5, blue 1, blue 2. You want to avoid that at all costs and there's a whole bunch of different colors out there. But the fact is is that when we look at all of them they are linked to cancer and we need to avoid them. This next ingredient is one that most people aren't familiar with because it kind of popped up overnight. It was something like you never heard of and then all of a sudden it was there. And this is carrageenan. Now carrageenan is used as a thickener or an emulsifier. 
and it's actually linked to some pretty nasty stuff. For one, it's linked to triggering chronic inflammation, but two, it actually is associated with causing ulcers and gastrointestinal problems. So, you know, as I work with a lot of people with gut issues, I certainly do not like carrageenan in my food or anybody else's food because there's enough gut issues going around that we don't need anything that's going to further the issue. Now watch out for all these toxic ingredients because I'm telling you they're in foods that you would never suspect to see them in. Now to learn more about foods that will burn belly fat, you're trying to lose a little weight, want to burn some belly fat, watch this video right here. Now this next food, before I mention it, I want you to brace yourself because I don't want you to fall out of your chair, your bed, or whatever it is that you're watching this from and then blame me for it. So brace yourself because this food is the potato. Now hold on and hear me out on this one. 